Good morning, friends. For today's video, we're going to do kind of like what I call the works on my nails. We're going to remove this polish, do like manicure steps, and then do a fresh manicure. It's been a while since I have done like my full manicure routine and nail it with me. And my nails just need it. They're getting a little longer than I like. And... And you do some cuticle work, so I figured I would just do it on camera with you guys. So, I'm going to go through, like, everything I'm using and then get to it. So, first, I'm going to remove... This is Color Club Can You Not? And I'm going to remove that with Zoya Remove Plus. I'm working through a bunch of, like cotton stuff that I have so that I can just continue to buy the ones that I like but um I'm working through these and I don't like these can you see all of the little fuzzies not a fan but I'm just trying to work through them after I remove my polish I'm going to go in with this cuticle remover and I think that this is still like the blue cross um I've had the same like giant bottle since I've started doing nails like six years ago so I've had this for a long time and I just keep refilling this bottle but I actually really like the London town one um I'm just out of that one at the moment but yeah I'm gonna do some cuticle removal and um oh I think my nippers are downstairs I'm gonna have to go get those and then I'm also gonna be using my glass nail file this one was just like in a set from Amazon I've had it forever for base coat, I'm going to use this Terra Beauty base coat. I'm trying to work through this one, and then I'm going to use my new Zoya Ultra Glossy. I do like this top coat, but I haven't used it on a regular manicure. I only used it on nail art, so I want to try that out. I was using the Terra Beauty top coat, but it's a little, like, thick for me. Like, I haven't used all that much of it, and it's already kind of doing, like, strings and stuff where it's really thick and I just wanted to do a crisp white manicure so I'm gonna use basic from loud lacquer and just do a really nice white mani so usually when I take my polish off I just hold the whatever cotton I'm using on my nail for just a couple seconds maybe 45 seconds and then I'll go ahead and like kind of wiggle it around a touch. After I remove my polish, I'll go in with the cuticle remover. And I usually just do two nails at a time. I just put it on and gently kind of push the sides and all of the bottom. These are the cuticle nippers that I use. I just got them off of Amazon. And the next thing I'll do is just kind of go in and like get any of the little bits that I picked up while I was doing the cuticle remover. I don't like just go around and cut everything because it's usually not needed. After I do all of the cuticle removing, I go in and file. And typically I will go down the sides like like this it's hard to do on camera I'll go down the sides and then I'll go a couple times across just to get the shape and the length that I like yeah. and once I feel like I've done that I round my corners just because I don't like them to be so sharp um, I like my length to be like just right at the edge of my fingertip. I find that that is where I get the least breaks. So I kind of square them 
and then just round the corners so that they're not so sharp. Once I'm done filing, I'll usually just run like a little block down and get all those extra bits. You can also just like peel them up with your finger, but you're wanna, you'll want to get these off because any of this extra like debris stuff will get into your manicure. <laughs> I filed this hand. It's just hard for me to um, file on camera. It's just like in the way I like to get up in my nails and see them, but it is finally time to paint. So I'm just going to kind of clean up any dust or anything on my nails. I also cleaned my little mat here, but just get everything off. Oh, that Zoya remover has a smell. Okay. So, I'm going to go in with base coat, and base coat really should dry fairly quickly, so I'm just going to do a quick coat. Base coat can help protect your nail from staining, or there's different like variations where they could be like ridge filling if you have ridge nails. Um, that can help kind of even out your polish and such. So there's lots of different base coats. I don't have any like specific requirements for my base coat, honestly. I just like for them to kind of protect my nail a little bit from the ever-changing polish colors. Okay, I'm gonna wait maybe 30 seconds and then I will go in with the polish. All right, so a big part of painting your nails is actually the polish brush. I like the Loud Lacquer brush just because it has like that rounded edge and it's pretty dense, which means that it's gonna get good coverage. A lot of times the old brushes from Essie or China Glaze are really skinny and they just don't deposit the polish nicely they don't really fit kind of the anatomy of anyone's nail but a lot of brushes now are kind of rounded so that you get that nice edge which is obviously more helpful for I would say 90% of people's nails um, I know some people don't like the wider brushes because of their nail beds, but I really do. <laughs> so I start kind of in the middle and like push down into that area and use the brush to kind of make the shape and then just fill in the sides. As I need to. I'm trying not to do too much polish, but I'm also trying not to have it take three coats for this to be opaque. And I kind of forgot to mention, I was going to mention it now, but this is acetone in a little container and a um, like cuticle brush. Sorry. And then a little cup that I'll put my acetone in here in just a second and we'll clean up as we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up these little bits while they're still kind of wet. It's easier to clean them up if they're not completely dried down onto the rest of the polish. And I have found that it's better to have like not completely saturated cleanup brush but also not a completely dry cleanup brush like there's a happy middle where it will clean but it won't drag your polish and it won't flood around your nail 
I don't worry too much about the shape of like this area until my second coat, but I'm just kind of trying to clean up any polish on my skin. And usually by the time I get to like finish my other hand, this side is pretty dry and I'll just go ahead and go in with my second coat and just do literally the same thing. The only thing I do different on the second coat is I try to even out this line. If there's any like spots where I feel like it's not, not exactly even, like this nail right here has a little divot right there. So I'll still go into the middle, but I'll kind of push into that little section and just try to fill out. So um, some people will like cap their edges, which is when you take the brush and you kind of like swipe it across the end to kind of seal the end of your nail with the polish. <clears throat> And it's supposed to help with chipping. I don't do that. I would say 85, 90% of the time, unless I'm just feeling it. And sometimes I will. Um, I do usually do it with my top coat, but I don't typically do that with my polish. I just haven't found that it really helps my manicure. And I just don't do it. Um, but if you are having chipping problems, maybe that is something that you could try. And then I used to go in and like round all of my kind of cuticle areas and like shape them up. I used to do it on every manicure, even if it looked completely fine. Um, I've kind of, oh, sorry. I've kind of gone away from that and if it's not looking too scary like jagged I just leave it because I don't I don't wear makeup but I feel like it's similar to like when people talk about doing their eyebrows <laughs> you try to fix one area and then you try to fix it on the other side and then you try to fix this area and then by the time you're done it's just a hot mess I will get carried away with cleanup so usually as long as the line is like decent um then I just don't mess with it, which is why I try to wear polishes that have that wider rounded brush because it helps with this a lot. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it as far as like painting. I just try to make sure, I just try to make sure that nothing's on my skin and that if there is any kind of like jagged spots or lines that I just clean it up. Um, another huge thing in nail polish in general is the gap between your nail and your cuticle or I'm sorry your like cuticle area and your polish. So like this gap right here. Um, some people are adamant that there should not be a gap and that it looks bad and that it just looks grown out and that you have to go all the way to the skin and all of this um i wholeheartedly disagree i think that it looks better when there is a crisp line around because it feels like <clears throat> it feels like more of a professional manicure to me just because it's a clean line and it's not just going up into your skin um, to each their own on that but my response is no one should be in my nails like that unless they are paying some of my bills they're taking care of me <laughs> um, so don't comment about the gap I had a lot of those when I first started my Instagram because this was still like not a new technique but a technique that people at home weren't really doing and they didn't understand it and so I had a lot of comments back then of like why don't you go all the way to your nail you don't know how to paint your nail like all of this I don't get them so much anymore because I feel like people understand that it helps get that professional look um but it was a huge thing back when I started my Instagram for people to comment nonsense 
a lot of the quick dry top coats will need to be applied when your nails are still kind of like tacky wet not when they're dry because part of how they dry is that they kind of like shrink up all of the stuff so if you put that on, put it on when your polish is already dry then it will continue to like shrink things i haven't had that problem really because i've always put it on like almost right after i do let it dry just a little bit so that the brush strokes from the top coat brush don't like get into the wet polish but i definitely don't let it dry completely and i literally do the exact same thing um with my top coat i just go push it into the middle and then pull out i try not to have a ton of top coat on my brush because that creates bubbles for me and the other question that i get a lot is how do you sit and not let them get messed up they always get messed up they take forever to dry and then i hit them and then they get messed up um don't fuck with anything <laughs> like that's really it just don't mess with anything just kind of sit sit for like 10 minutes um i know that's hard for people with like kids and stuff like that but take a little time for yourself paint your nails sit for a little bit after if you're using the right top coat then it shouldn't completely mess up after like 15 minutes just hang out be on your phone like that's the easiest way that i have found is to just be on my phone or even my laptop and i'll just kind of hang out on my laptop for a little bit i'll be careful with how i type but i'm not like grabbing my laptop and moving it somewhere and then plugging in the charger like all of that is stuff that's going to mess up your nails so i will usually have everything set up if i know i'm going to be doing my nails so that i can do something after so i don't feel like i'm just sitting here i actually did a whole video on like a real time do my nails what i do before i do my nails like i put on chapstick and i go to the bathroom and i put my hair out of my way like just all of those things that will mess up your nails so this is how i do my nails and what i do for my at-home manicure i a lot of times when i do my nail with me i just paint them and talk to you guys but i realized i hadn't shown some of my steps recently so that is how i do my nails i love a crisp white manicure so that is what i went with if you enjoyed let me know if you have any questions down below and i'll see you in the next video